Well, you can imagine flying on Qantas, Virgin, Jetstar and Tiger all in one day. Well, that's what our next guest did as part of an investigation to reveal Australia's best and worst airline. Here to tell us the results, we're joined by travel blogger Angus Kidman. Good morning to you. Good morning, Steve. Now, Matt, first we've got to ask you, what prompted you to try this social experiment? Oh, really, I'm just nuts, I think. <laughs> but I thought it's, you want to take that chance. Everyone, you tend to get stuck on the same airlines all the time. You either, you've got a lot of points with them or you really live somewhere there's only one plane. I thought it's good to really see how they rank, you know, stack up against each other. And the best way to do that was to try them all on one day rather than spreading it out because then there's sort of too many variables in it. So it's the most scientific way you could go about it, really. So you flew Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Hobart and ended up back in Sydney. You flew on four of the majors, Qantas, Jetstar, Virgin, Blue and Tiger. I've flown three of those. I find them all quite quite similar. There are some small changes, but how did you rate them? Was it by cost, by service, or uh, overall travel experience? In the end, you've got to look at overall travel experience. The cost is actually much the same with all of them now. You can fly certainly between the capital cities tends to cost about the same. So you've just got to look at how comfortable they are you in your seat, how nice are the staff. I'm obsessed with you know, carrying gadgets, so how easily can you fit your laptop in front of you, or how, how badly are you kneeing the person in front of you, that kind of thing. So. Now when you're talking about gadgets, I suppose security is a big one. Are there any easier ways for people to deal with security, particularly with the th threats in the US recently? Things are probably only going to get tougher. So how does each airline affect the traveller in that sense? Oh, it's, that's affected more by the airport you go through because some of them are much fussier than others. Even in Sydney where you've got sort of three terminals, different terminals, some of them are a lot you know, pickier. The best thing you can do is not take much of it. The more gadgets you've got with you, the longer you take getting through security because they just start thinking you're some kind of freak. They think that about me quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Who do you think is the best? Oh, I still think it's Qantas. Qantas actually give you the best service. They're the only ones to give you free food. Uh, on the other hand, they're slightly pricier to a lot more pricier depending on when you book your ticket. So, but I still think at the end of the day, they come out ahead of the other three who are all pretty close. And on the other end of the scale, oh, the it's other... three are close, but what yeah. did you find was the worst of the day? Oh, Jetstar still have the worst seats. They're still unpleasant. Virgin try a lot harder, but I was a bit disappointed. They gave me a really sloppy day. I went to the lounge and they'd run out of towels. I went to check in and they thought I needed wheel chair assistance. I don't know where they got that from. So, <laughs> What about travelling with children? Have you got any tips when it comes to travelling with children? Obviously you did this by yourself on the day. Yeah. Uh, well, don't. Would be the <laughs> no, that's a bit harsh. That's a bit harsh. Um, I think you just you need to be, you know you need to be organised. You need to know what's going on. You need to chat to your kids. I often see people on planes and they're kind of screaming their kids shut up and the kids want to know what's happening. I think if you talk to them would be you know a good you know, a good start and make sure you've got plenty of lollies because their ears are going to go off. So, so <laughs> how important do you think the personal touch is, the the service that you get from the different airlines, whether it be from checking in or into the lounge or the airline attendants? I'll, I think it's everything really. That's what you remember about the experience. You get one crabby flight attendant or one really narky person on the desk who doesn't want to help you and that's going to colour your experience of the airline and then you won't care how much money you save. You're just going to think, ah, stuff it, not flying with them again. Yeah, what about flight delays? Everyone's always raving about flight delays. Your plate... Planes delayed by five minutes and you, you, know, you like to exaggerate, oh, we're two minutes delayed. Is this an endemic problem in our, our country? Actually, it's not. Everyone always remembers when they get delayed and they forget when they don't. When I did this, I thought that was where it was all going to go wrong. I'm going to spend, you know, one of my flights is going to be so delayed, I'm going to miss the next three, I'm going to end up stuck in Hobart, something like that. And it didn't happen. All my flights came in, you know, on time or ahead of schedule. And most flights do. The, even the worst performing airline out of those four, which is Tiger, three quarters of their flights come in on time um, with version and Qantas is more like 85%. So it's nowhere near as bad as people think. But you never remember all the times it works. You just think about the times it doesn't. <laughs> and, and just one quick one before we go. I always um, find it's a real problem um, being tall. Uh, where you sit on the plane. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, how did you go with that? Uh, it's not, I'm, I'm about six foot tall. It's just capable, you know, it's fine at that point. You're kneeing the seats a bit, but they're all much the same. Again, Qantas got slightly more room on their planes, but not heat. You know, if you're, you know, if you're six foot six, you're, you're in real trouble. You're just going to be uncomfortable. You've got to splurge the extra money otherwise, and you're still going to just feel bad when you get there. I don't think you can get around it. So, yeah, there are advantages in not being too tall. All right, mate. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> no um, safe travels. Uh, basically, I think uh, when it comes to it, Layla, you get what you pay for and that's why I'm filling in today.